Right. So we're going to get straight into an example of how to use simple interest. Uh, one thing, um, sorry, compound interest. Just remember when you are dealing with compound interest, you're talking about an exponential increase in money. So if I had to graph it, okay, if this depicts my compound interest, your money will grow like that. Okay, it will grow exponentially. Whereas if you were... Uh, calculating interest on a simple interest method, your money will grow on a straight line basis. Okay, so that's the difference. As you can see, after the first year of the investment, really your money starts growing quite a lot faster than it will on a simple interest method. Okay, so just a quick little uh, graph for you to depict and see what's happening. So when you're dealing with compound interest, we're looking at an exponential increase in money, which after the first year will become much higher than what you can get on a simple interest method. Okay, all right, so as I was saying, first example, all right, they tell us that Tyrone invests 4,000 Rand for five years at 15% per annum, compounded annually. They say find the future value. That's another way to say accumulated amount. Okay, sometimes you see that being used. All right. Find the future value of the investment after five years and the interest that he receives. Okay, so they're asking you two things here. Firstly, what is the accumulated amount? And then next, um, what is the interest that he receives? So let's mark down. We know that he invests 4,000 Rand. So A is 4,000. I'm just going to rewrite. Sorry, P is 4,000. In fact, let me just get rid of that. So that's our P amount. Our principal original amount is 4,000 Rand. He invests it for five years. So therefore, N is equal to five at an interest rate of 15%, so therefore I is 0 0.15. And remember, the way I got that is I took 15 and I divided it by 100. Okay, it's compounded annually. They want the amount of the investment after year 5. All right, so we're going to use our compound interest formula. A is equal to P times 1 plus I to the power of n. Okay, so your n now, your number of years, is an exponent. We simply plug in our initial amount, which is 4,000, times 1 plus i, i being your interest rate, which is 0 0.15, and we're going to grow all of that for 5 years, so n is 5. Alright? Let's have a look at what we get there. So it's going to be 4,000 in brackets, 1.15. And this is all going to be to the power of 5. And that gives us 8,045 rand and 43 cents. So 8,045. 8,045. And... 43 cents. Okay, so that is the value of the investment after five years of compound interest. Okay, so five years of compound interest working on that value of 4,000 rand and you get an amount of 8,045 rand and 43 cents. Guys, what I want to do, because I know you would have done these kind of exercises at school as well, but I want to show you, just diverse a bit from the question, I want to show you what would have happened if we worked this out using simple interest. So I'm going to do something that's slightly different, not really what the questions asked us to do, but I just want to show you if we had worked this out do using simple interest. Okay, so this is an aside. And in case you were wondering, well, what's the big difference between simple interest and compound interest? Have a look at this. If we were working out simple interest, we were going to say 1 plus 0 0.15, 1 plus 0.15, and then we times n is 5. Okay, and let's see what we get. So it's going to be 4,000, and then in brackets, 1 plus 0.15 times 5. And that's going to give us 7,000 rand. So as you can see, 
that's equal to 7,000 Rand. That's quite a big difference, hey, in the same period from 7,000 to 8,045 Rand. You're making 1,045 Rand more using your compound interest method versus simple interest. And that's why in the real world out there, when you're getting your investments and in that, your investments are done on compound interest. We don't really use simple interest for investing of money because as you can see, you're going to get a much better rate on a compound interest formula versus a simple interest formula when we use the same interest rate. So 15% in both of these is going to be better using compound interest than simple interest. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that if you've got the same interest rate and you've got a choice, you rather choose to invest your money via compound interest. Okay, and what's important there is it's got to be the same interest rate. Okay, so I looked at 15% over the same time period. If, of course, you change the rates, then we're going to be talking about a completely different story. Okay, but basically, for our purposes for now, compound interest 15% is going to be much better than simple interest 15%. Okay, we get more money out. All right, so we get 8,045 Rand on our compound interest formula which is the value of the investment after five years. Then I then ask you for the interest he receives. So the interest he receives is just that extra bit, that bit that took his money from 4,000 to 8,045 rand. So if I want to work out the interest that he receives, I simply take 8,045 rand and 33 cents, and I minus the original amount which he invested, which was 4,000. 43 cents, hey? All right. And 43, 43 cents. cents. There we go. Okay. So that will give me 8,045 minus 4,000 will give me 4,045 rand and 43 cents. Hey, Looney? Yes. Okay. So that's 4,045 rand and 43 cents over that five-year period. And that, remember, is just your interest. That's how much of interest he has earned in that five-year period. And it's important that you guys distinguish between the interest that they earn and then the final amount because they are two completely different things. Okay. So here we're told that 6,500 is de uh, deposited into a savings account and I'm going to mark this on our timeline as we go through the question. Okay, so we start with time naught. There's our timeline. We're going to go from time naught. Okay, and they say 6,500 is deposited into a savings account. So that's the amount that's going into the account at time naught. Three years later, so now at time three, three years later, 7,400 Rand is added to the account. So we add in another 7,400. Then they say at the end of five years, so now at time five, they withdraw 5,800. Now guys, we use brackets to show a withdrawal, okay? Those of you who do accounting will be familiar with this, but generally when you're subtracting amounts out, you use brackets to show that it's less that amount. So at time five, the brackets around the 5,800 means that amount is coming out of the account. They want to know how much will be in the account at the end of 10 years. And they tell you that your interest rate is 11% per annum. So 11% is 0, 0,11. Okay. So I'm going to use method one in order to answer this question. So in method one, what I do is I move each amount to time 10. Okay, so each and every amount moves to that point in time, and then we add everything together. I think this is the most efficient way to do it, but if you don't like it this way, you can use method two. So this is all happening at time six. Okay, so we take the 6,500, remember always using our compound interest formula. So it's 1 plus the interest rate, rate of 0, 0,11. So it's 1 plus 0, 0,11, which is 1, 1,11. And that's in the account, in the savings account, from 0 to 10. And that's going to be, so from present time to 10 years later, so that's going to be for 10 years. Then 
at time three, year three, you have another 7,400 added into that account. And we work out the interest there from year three to year 10, that's seven years. And then time five, remember we're subtracting that amount out, the 5,800. So that amount is going to be subtracted out of the entire account at time 10. Okay, so if we're moving from time five to time 10, that's going to be a period of five years. All right. Okay, now that entire expression, you're just going to simply put that entire expression into your calculator and see what your final amount is going to be. So this is, remember once again, using the formula A is equal to P times 1 plus I to the power of N. And we want to know the final amount after we've changed and we've added and subtracted amounts. Okay, so let's use our calculator. So we've got... 6,500 and we have interest working on that for a period of 10 years. Okay, we then add another 7,400 rand um, three years later. So that's going to be the, in the account for a period of seven years. And then finally, you saw what happened is that they subtracted an amount of 5,000, or they withdrew an amount of 5,800 rand at time 5. So that's going to be 1, 1, 1 to the power of 5. Okay, and we end up with 24,000 rand, uh, 24,046 rand and 48 cents. Okay, so it's 24,000. And 46 rand, and let's just recall the cents, 48 cents. Okay, so let's just go over what I've done here, right? How did I get that amount? I simply said, well, if we're starting at time zero, I work out what the value of the 6,500 rand is going to be at that point in time, time 10. I then look at the 7,400 rand, work out what amount that's going to be at time 10. We're subtracting an amount of 5,800 rand. So we're moving it to that point in time and say, well, how much will it be worth at that time? All right, and then you subtract and add all of the amounts at the specific time and you get an amount of just um, over 24,000 rand. Okay, so with the method I'm using, which is method one, you can only add things together if they're at the same point in time. Okay, so that's the important thing that you guys need to take out um, from this section. We are told that a mother invests 9,000 Rand in a savings account when her two daughters, <laughs> the N is missing there, when her two daughters are 7 and 10 years old. All right. She gives each of them 15,000 Rand in the year they turn 21. The interest rate is 11% compounded annually. How much will she have left in the account after she has given the youngest daughter 15,000 Rand? Okay, so at first it seems a little bit complicated because there's so much going on. There's two different kids, the one is seven, the other one's 10. They're both getting money when they're 21 years old. It all seems like a bit much to sort of digest and to just get an answer to. So this is when we need a timeline, okay? Typical example of when you're going to have to use a timeline to help you to answer a financial calculation. All right, so let's put the information we've got onto a timeline. Okay. So we'll draw our timeline once again. And let's have a look at what's going on. So mother invests 9,000 rand into a savings account. Remember, we're starting at the present time. Everything's happening now, okay? She puts 9,000 rand into the savings account. So that's the first thing that she does. And at this point, when she's putting this money into the account, the one daughter is 7 years, and then the other one is... 10 years old. So obviously the younger daughter is 7, the older daughter is 10 years old. 
she will then give each of them 15,000 rand in the year they turn 21. Now, let's have a think about that, right? She's put this money in, say, today, 2013, August, right? And she's got two children, one is seven, one is ten. She's going to give them 15,000 rand in the year they turn 21. Now, obviously, it doesn't matter what year you're starting in. It's going to be the same amount of time because the seven-year-old is going to take 14 years to get to the age of 21, at which point she'll get the 15,000 rand, okay? And then the 10-year-old is going to take 11 years to get to the age of 21, and at that point she'll get 15,000 rand. Okay, so there's two separate things going on, but we can represent it on one timeline. Okay, so the seven-year-old, they wanted to know um, how much will she have when the youngest daughter, who's obviously the seven-year-old, gets her money of 15,000 rand. Okay, so as I said, two different things, but one timeline. We know that the first daughter is going to get her money at time. Remember, she's 10 years old. She's getting the money when she's 21. So 21 minus 10 is 11. Okay, so she's getting her, her money in 11 years' time. The oldest daughter is then going to get her money. Remember, she's 7 years old. She's going to get the money when she's 21. So therefore, 21 minus 7 is 14. So she's going to get her money 14 years from now. Okay, the youngest daughter, 14 years from now, she'll get 15,000. The oldest daughter, 11 years from now, she'll get 15,000. So at this point in time, 15,000 rand is going to go off the account. Remember, we use brackets to show that it's subtracted. And then at this point, time 14, another 15,000 is going off the account. Okay, and the interest rate that they've given us to work with here is 11%. So it's for the entire period. We don't have a change in interest rate. So your interest rate, 0, 0,11. Okay. First thing we need to do is to work out the first time she gives the oldest daughter money, how much is going to be left in the account. But obviously at that point in time, at time 11, the money that she originally invested is going to have interest on it. Okay, so at that point, at time 11, all right, that 9,000 Rand is obviously going to have interest on it. Okay, so we take that 9,000, we say times 1, 1, 1 to the power of 11. At that point, we then subtract 15,000 Rand. Okay, because that's the money she is going to take off at that point in time. So it's 9,000 times 1.11 to the power of 11. And we're going to subtract 15,000 rand. So at that point, she's got 13,365,82. Okay. Okay, so that's what's in the account, and I have rounded off there. That's what's in the account at time 11. We're then going to take that amount, see how much of interest she gets until time 14. So 14 minus 11 is now going to be 3 years, and we then subtract the other 15,000. So we're going to say 13, 3, 6, 5, 8, 2. We've got interest on that account for a period of 3 years, and then we subtract 15,000 and we get so it's that times by 1.11 to the power of 3 subtract 15,000 and she's going to be left with an amount of 3,279 rand in that account after she's given both her daughters their presents of 15,000 rand 